is Keith Ross. I am the host of Frag Magic, and before we get into the episode, I wanted to do my due diligence to shed some light on a bunch of the wonderful totemic artifacts that we are creating across many a medium, from our collectively the hallowed to me personally. Um, one major talismanic journal is my publication of the Divergent Magical Grimoire. Um, anyone can use it. It is magician operational. It is paradigm operational. There's no distinct current. It is a schema uh, for you to log, create, construct, deconstruct, hell, even ruin the rituals that make your art, that make your day, that make your communion to the other. So you can check this out, as well as t-shirts and fun ephemera from We The Hollowed Artist Eric J. Millar, or me, like Dakota Slim, uh, Rebel Roz, who I just released a new song sigil that I'll be releasing every few weeks or so, that is also accompanied with a videomantic visualizer, and that'll all build into the debut first highly produced full-length album. Here you know about the Prag Magic podcast or the YouTube channel, and I really, really appreciate you stopping by, giving us some tricky old demonic engagement in these digital rhythms. But a like, a share, a subscribe, all of that tit-for-tat kind of clickety-clack really goes a long way to help support a bunch of magical ephemera of all sorts. So help support the DIY human error punks in fighting this ridiculous, absurd, new high-tech era with some high-touch magics. Thanks for stopping by. Patreon.com slash Pride Magic. On time. Shalom, shalom. Uh, I'm Keats Ross. This is Prag Magic. We are gathered here today uh, in quick succession from uh, my last chat with the wonderful Chet Czar that was uh, completely goofed with because I'm going to blame the stars. I'm going to say it was the Mars, you know, Uranus, Algo conjunction while presidents were getting almost assassinated or dropping out of races. Um, my internet decided to fuck with me, so I can't complain too much. Uh, but Chet, thank you so much for coming back and, uh, following up because yeah, we were just about to really dig into some deep, awesome things. So I appreciate your time, man. Oh yeah. No problem. Happy to be here. Yeah. It, 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 was, it was such a bad time to <laughs> stop <laughs> or maybe a good time, like a good cutoff point. So we could just continue and then have this second part be like a really good show. Yeah, I think the first one, it was almost kind of initiatory and in us just kind of figuring out our our rhythms. But um, yeah. there was so many good comments about us really diving into the uh, confluence of the artistic struggle, the modern artistic struggle with finances, relationships with money, 
mm-hmm. you know, um, having to put yourself out there. And it's just such a common and almost ubiquitous thing for anyone in any artistic yeah. setting that it's the, it's the problem. Yeah. It's, and it, no one really, I think, you know, we, we talked about this too, just this day and age of showing your best self for this weird alternate egregore of a reality that you sometimes visit, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. in, instead of really like talking about the labor, like the intense sweat equity that goes into not only creating the works, but you know, the uh, back end, the non fun mm-hmm. stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And That's I know it. you've been working really hard. Um, you've got a show coming up. Uh, in October, and I, I wanted to talk more about that, but we can talk about the specifics later. But it, it's a perfect. I think you're in the perfect rhythm to discuss maybe, like these creative rituals. Like when you have a looming deadline, you know, and there's mm-hmm. this big kind of seminal event. Like, how are you ritualizing your your work, your week? You know, like what are your necessities for getting into that zone to produce? I hate that word, but you know what I mean? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's it's difficult. It, it's it's kind of like, you know, I think um, when you become officially uh, full-time, a full-time artist, you, one of the things you have to learn how to do is to make it happen, mm-hmm. whether you're inspired or not, whether you're tired, whether you had to deal with a bunch of business bullshit all day, you have to you have to figure out how to make it happen. And, um, uh, otherwise, you know, you can't wait around for inspiration, you know, all the stuff you always hear. It's like, you have to do it when you have, when you're, when you're supposed to do it, do the thing and do it well. And, um, so, I mean, and that's always the case with me, you know, my days are always split between business stuff that I don't want to do that I have to do. And then usually kind of painting in the second half of the day and the evening. And, um, it's really, it's kind of an art to be able to turn everything off and just start create creating, you know? Um, so, uh, I, I, it's funny. My, my ritual is to put on some old cheesy horror movie that I love that I've seen a million times that kind of like sort of occupies my mind and, and takes it away from what I'm working on. Like, yeah. the tech, it's weird. It's like, I, I don't know if it's because I grew up in the seventies. I was like a TV kid where the TV was always on when I was drawing yeah, and I watch, was too. Yeah, <laughs> watching TV and, yep, oh. cartoons and stuff. And so I, I get like a kind of a comfort with the TV on. So I'll put uh, uh, movies on because I love movies. And so, uh, and, and I'll just kind of get in that, try and get in that zone. I was when I was a kid, when there was no worries and you're just doing it for fun. And, um, you know, it's not nothing really more than that. It's not like some big magical, uh, act, but it is, it is a ritual and it, and it really is. And it's, it's, uh, it puts me in the zone. It helps me to, to create the work and get into it. And, And I just try and shut everything else out. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll smoke a little weed that helps. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, that's my next question. There, there's a lot, like, you know, I know for you, it's a very kind of usual, almost, you know, just kind of pragmatic, like, approach to just getting your butt in the chair, which, you right. know, I'm a firm, firm believer of as well. And, um, but there were some things to unpack there, like, you know, why, why delineate it kind of at the end of the day? Like, how did you discover that maybe the, you know, muse is better to dance with, you know, in the afternoon hours or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely my natural rhythm. It's like, I get okay. all the stuff. I'm a night person and, and I'm, yeah. I'm always struggling with that because um, it's just, it's hard to live that kind of schedule, especially I have, you know, someone who comes in and helps me with the, the business stuff in the day. And so okay. it's, you know, I have to be up by nine when they get here in the morning. So I can't get too crazy. Like I can't, do what I probably would if I didn't have any limitations put on me. I probably would be a person that works until sunrise. Okay. I've always been like that. It's just like, since I was a yeah. little kid uh, and, and every time during the summers when there was no school, I would stay up all night and make art. And so it's just, you know, it's, it's just in me. I just feel it at night more. Mm-hmm. It's same, same with any kind of spiritual work. 
or tripping or any any of that stuff it's always been like night is where to me is where the magic is sure yeah you know I, That's I, I, things are the most dim for sure yep yeah everything's quiet and and uh it just feels like I don't know. I just, I just, I'm, I'm a night person. So that's kind of how it, uh, how it works out. And I, I end up starting later in the day and, and it goes, usually goes till 12 or one in the morning. You know, okay. if I'm being, if I'm being good and there's not crazy deadlines, I can, I try and get to bed at 11 or something, you know, yeah. but, but I'm painting up until that. I love this because uh, I do the same, whether it's an old, old radio shows is a big thing that I always have on. Oh, Even yeah, yeah. I'm working that... on music like I they'll they'll be yeah. something. until I'm recording. I'll shut it off and but I'll put it back on for, you know, writing or, 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 or anything. I used to yeah. have a uh, little VHS TV and I would just, you know, cycle VHS is there. Was, yep. But there's something comforting about that consistent hum. Or like yeah. familiarity breaks your brain for a second, then you go back in. So I totally yeah, yeah, get... yeah. It's a trip, you know. Beck, do you know Bekshinsky, the painter? Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. Yeah, he um said he could not stand the sound of silence. I'm not <laughs> like that, but he he said that he would. I think he would turn the. Uh, he always had classical music playing, blasting, and um, he said he'd rather hear the sound of a vacuum cleaner than silence <laughs> like silence filled, filled it with dread i love so that it. was kind of funny <laughs> it makes i mean it makes sense to me I, I was thinking too just even in even in my meditation practice like i'm largely in in a shower it, which is mm. roaring roaring loud with what yeah you know? yeah that, that's funny i have a my friend i have a friend who uh, my friend josh does that too he kind of does his meditation in the shower <laughs> yeah yeah a liminal bath kind of a thing but yeah. <laughs> yeah there's something super i love that that um you know it, it has that always you said like since you were a kid and i share that with you i was born in the late 80s but like okay. same um parents were never around split you know divorced like classic yeah uh, raised by the television latchkey kid you know yeah same i was exactly I, the same way i think that yeah there's something there about uh you know that that comfort of media it's like you're, you're feeding um it's almost like an Ouroboros of you're recharging from the things that inspire you to actually you know spinning yeah. it on paper yeah yeah i think it kind of it was a sort of like a companionship thing too yeah because you know we were latchkey kids you came home after school dad was living somewhere else my mom was working she was a teacher so she wasn't there brother and sister were older so they were off doing whatever so it's like it's a way to i don't know between that and your animals it's a way of yeah. feel, feeling alone you know yeah that's be yeah it's beautiful actually and there is something that's like uh we're kind of the uh like cathode ray generation you know we're mm, growing yeah up like <laughs> totally um, <laughs> I, yeah, and I love that. There, there's so much to unpack with just that aspect of it and how much it's kind of trained us, even maybe socially, too, or or otherwise, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, my, uh, are there, you mentioned, like, you know, maybe sometimes herb or whatever, but are there other necessities you found, like, even, like, if someone was to ask you, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with finding a ritual, like, to get my butt in the chair, and, you know, obviously, my first advice would be well you got to experiment you got to get yeah. your butt in the chair at any time to figure out when it works the best you know right right um one of my favorite uh something that i've always carried and i shared was uh nick cave talks about how he will go nine to five he will go to an office whether or not he's inspired a lot of days he just sits on the couch staring mm -hmm. at the ceiling but like he has to be there in case something happens you know right. yeah and uh but yeah, how did you uh, kind of fortify? Are there other elements to kind of get you in the mood that you find you need? Caffeine to, you know. Yeah, there's always that. Yeah. <laughs> there's always coffee. There's, you know, I like, it's simple. I some incense. I got a candle on my altar. Okay. It's, you know, yeah. it's very simple stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, but I love doing it, you know. I love it. It's it's like, uh, um. You know, people that, you know, that they say about magic, like uh, uh, the really great magicians are people that they're doing it because they love it. Yeah. 
And it's not so much about getting results. It's more yes. about it's who they are. It's what they love to do. And you, they do it for its own sake. And it, and I feel like that's how it is for me with artwork. Yeah. You know? And that is my magic. That's, that's, that's the thing that I'm just doing it for its own sake. I would be doing it anyway if I wasn't getting paid or selling selling stuff um so you know when it's when you're doing something you love like that um i you don't i don't think you need to coax yourself into getting motivated at least sure. that's for me it's it's always been like I, I can't wait to get to it i want to get all this other bullshit out of the way so i can yeah. get to the painting part because that's the part i love you know so yeah, uh, there's like little practical things. If it gets too messy, I'm a really, really messy person. And if it gets mm -hmm. too messy, I'll clean my studio. That always feels good and helps me feel kind of refreshed. But I do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> brain break. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but it's, but it's like I have a high tolerance for messes. Is is the thing? I'll, <laughs> I'll, it's it's super high. It's like I'm, I I uh, that's make I that's the difference between me and a hoarder is that. I have a tolerance where I can't take it anymore. Right. I have to clean. Whereas hoarders, they don't have that tolerance. Or they they don't have a point where they're like, I got to clean. They just or yeah. get past that point. But I have a breaking point where you're like walking around and all, everything's falling over because there's so much <laughs> junk everywhere. And I finally, I stop everything, just do a massive cleaning over an hour or two or something. And I'm like, okay, I feel good again. Well, that was going to be my next question, too, about like set and setting. I know for me, um, it's extremely important uh, to have what I call the dimming room, which is like this place where not only do can I just be alone, be myself, like get away, but it's also like an engine for creativity. I've mm -hmm. got every tool I need, cameras and, yeah. you know, instruments and, you know, whatever. Like how how important has it been to kind of get your set and setting? sorted yeah that's i mean that's you're describing my studio that's mm -hmm. what i call my studio which is my kids uh used to be his bedroom it's just a little bedroom in the house yeah and um it's full of all the junk i collect that i love and um every tool i need and it's like kind of like a it, it's it's kind of like a cockpit to a spaceship <laughs> that's what it yes. feels like like i'm in this chair this is the chair i use this is I'm facing this way. This is sort of like the window to outer space or whatever, you know, you're navigating. I love it. Yeah. And uh, my tools are here. My paints are over here. I got all my brushes over here. I got my computer right here in case I need mm -hmm. reference. I got a couple of screens and it's just like it's just like I'm, I feel like, a, um, you know, getting in a cockpit and in like alien or something. Yeah. You know, sitting and getting ready. And I always feel like that when I get in. It's like, OK, I'm ready to work. And, it, and it's and it's uh I don't know. There's something. It. There's something. There's something about the uh, the spaceship piloting thing that kind of the parallel that kind of works with with uh, painting at an easel. I think. Yeah, I, that's so funny. Yeah, I I call them battle stations. Yeah, yeah totally. It's like that. <laughs> well, it's like you're a gunner, you know, where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, here's the computer work. Here's where all the analog cassette tape stuff. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> and you just like you're just turning around and yeah, yeah. You know, and it but, feels so good to have all that stuff ready and you know yeah. where, where it is for the most part and knowing that you can just make all kinds of cool stuff in this little space. So when you get, cause I know like there is an element uh, because you are, you know, not only a successful artist, but you, you have to, you know, organize your day of business, all the other stuff outside of this, you know, battle station or this uh, cockpit. Right. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when you get a, when when you get hit by an inspo inspo punch, are are you quickly doodling it like in something and then you know kind of reserving it for the studio later? Like how how does that work if you're not there to kind of receive it? Oh yeah, I mean I'll just take a note in whatever whatever's easiest. If I'm sitting at a computer and I have this amazing idea, I'll sketch it in Photoshop. If I'm okay laying in bed at night and I just have my phone and I get this idea, I'll I'll write it or I'll try and like you know, draw it on a note or, or whatever on, on a, yeah. they have a like draw function on the, with your finger. It looks like crap, but as long as I can get like a stick figure just to, so I remember the idea Yeah. or a piece of paper, any scrap of paper, I just need to get it down. Cause I'll forget. Cause I, I have a 
my memory is not very good. Well, I was going to say, because I, I think you mentioned uh, dreams being kind of a big engine for a lot of this stuff. And like, you, yeah, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> well, that. well, no, it's like, it, it's, you know, dreams are super important, but to me, but they're not, I almost never have a, a dream that's like, oh, I got to paint that. Okay. Almost yeah. never. Like the monsters are. You know, when I have dreams about monsters, it's like they're never really cool. They're always like <laughs> they're always like paper mache monsters or something yeah, that you yeah. see in like a like a really crappy sideshow carnival when you're a kid. Yeah. It's really bizarre. And they're not That's... they're only scary because there's a feeling around it in the dream. It's okay. just nonsensical, weird, really weird. And it's kind of a bummer that I don't like dream up these amazing creatures that would be so cool well that's <laughs> harrowing because that might be evidence that uh you're not creating your dreams <laughs> you know yeah. like you're visiting somewhere yeah, you're right. like i would have designed this monster way oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i saw i remember one i had one that was so terrifying and it was like you know those um the French fry goblins from, from McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like one of those with no legs though. It was like a dome, and it was all like paper mache, <laughs> and it was covered with dried, crusty mustard. <laughs> and then it like went up the wall, and, and it was traveling on the ceiling, and it was big, like three or four feet. Like it was coming to me, and it was like so terrifying in the dream. This <laughs> stupid. <laughs> French paper mache, French fine goblin covered with dry mustard. <laughs> it's just it's that absurd. Mess. It, that's that's your limit, the hoarder limit coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that. That is, that is that's. It's like I don't know. I feel like because all of my artwork is so weird that mm -hmm. my dreams are so weird. They're like beyond normal weird. Yeah. <laughs> to the point of like stupid paper mache french fry goblins with must dried mustard on them that's true like I mean, a whole other level of weird yeah thing. like almost rubber bands because you do spend so much time in like the imaginarium of like really you know grandiose like creatures and ideas and yeah when you go to sleep your brain's like okay what do we got <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing cool left. Let's just yeah, do something really stupid. <laughs> or or like you you uh you know the super self knows to keep the good stuff for when you're awake. Yeah, that's after true. It. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I'm like interacting with that stuff, the good yeah. stuff on a daily basis. You know, so it it, it makes kind of makes sense in a way. I never thought about it. Yeah, and like I'm you you obviously you have kind of a lore too. There's there's a world that one can visit, like even you know, from your books that you've put out and all of this. Like, have you like been a cartographer of sorts to this like place? Like, is there a running kind of story? And yeah, yeah, that's the weird thing about uh the last book I produced was called Dystopia, and it's um mm -hmm. uh did I do you have that? I don't. Oh, I gotta send you a copy. I'll send oh, I would love that. Yeah. Um, it's epic. It's like four hundred pages. It's huge. Yeah, my uh partner Eric Millar, who's a big fan of yours, uh, I think he was part of the Kickstarter. So. Oh, okay. Cool. He I hope he got. Uh, yeah. Ask him if he got his book because <laughs> if, if he he needs to get in touch with me, I I I have. I'm still getting stuff out for that Kickstarter. Yeah. And it's been so long that. Kickstarter won't let me mass message any everybody. Oh, interesting. And so, and it's been so long that people have moved, so I can't be sending this book that cost me fifty dollars to produce. Right. That I only charged forty dollars for. I mean, I lost my shirt on that whole thing, but yeah, so I can't afford to send it to an address that I'm not sure if it's correct. So I'm kind of waiting for people to contact me so okay. I can send them the book. So ask him if he got his book. If I'll look him up and send him his stuff. But anyway, um, so. Yeah, the book start the dystopia book started out as uh like um during the, the making of the documentary, I like to paint monsters. Mm -hmm. Um I was talking to, to the director about <clears throat> you know, so many people interviewed said it's like, oh, it's like Chet's painting this world, and they all the characters seem like related, like they all come from the same place. And I, I heard heard that so many times in the interviews from people that 
I really thought thought about it, and I, and I'd heard that from before the documentary, but um, I started thinking about it, and it's like uh, totally unintentionally, I've been building this world. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to say by mistake, but not intentionally. Just like painting, my my approach to painting since I first started, because I was getting out of the uh, film industry where I was super art directed for everything, sculpting for horror movies and stuff that I wanted to, to like a pure art expression. So my uh, thought was I'm going to try and get back to where I was when I was a kid, when I was just doing it for its own sake. And I, and I wasn't having any kind of, try, wasn't trying to get a message out. I wasn't trying to do anything other than art for its own sake. Cause I love to do it. And yeah. so the thing that I did was paint these monsters. Right. And I wasn't thinking anything beyond I want to make a cool painting. Oh, this would be cool. This cool monster would be cool. It's, it's very simple, you know, kind of dumb, but <laughs> I was like totally following my own creative impulse yeah. without, without thinking about it or censoring it. So years go by and I have this realization that, you know, maybe there is kind of a world there. And so then the, the director started, uh, we started talking about like, I should make a book, uh, like a field guide. Yeah. And so, and so, and he's a writer. And so he started interviewing me about every painting that I had painted. And he, and I would, and once he started interviewing me, it's like, oh, this guy is, he does this and he's holding this. And what he's holding is this blah, blah, blah. I don't mm -hmm. know what this means over here. And so we just took all the information of every painting of what I was sure intuitively. And I didn't even realize I was, I'd never thought about it with most of these paintings. That, that that I knew that this guy was carrying this briefcase to the king of this territory. It's like, it was right, weird. Right. It was totally yeah. like I had the story, but I'd never verbalized it. I'd only gotten it out in, in uh, through a painting, and I never thought about it. It was this weird intuitive process. So he interviewed me, categorized all the stuff we knew for sure, that I knew for sure about these paintings. And then once it's all listed out, it's like, oh, there is a whole world there, a story, and it and it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. And there's good guys and bad guys. And it's really, it was weird. It was totally weird. It was like, I feel like this is the first book that was ever kind of written in reverse in a way, well, I, you yeah. know, because, because, and, and there is no story. We made it, made a point to not, I'm saving the story for like a comic book or something. Cause there sure. is a story there that I kind of discovered in discovering the world, but it, we just did it. Like, it's like an art book. Um, disguised as a field guide it was the concept and so it's like a field guide like a dungeon master guide or yeah, yeah. national geographic guide to you know the deepest depths of sub-saharan <laughs> africa or something it's like you know yeah, all, yeah, that, yeah. all the different characters and animals and stuff and um and then just put you know put everything in categories figured out what category what type of creature this is and um yeah, and just presented so, it like an art book, and 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 in in the meantime, though, it was like a story developed in my mind as to you know a basic storyline. So it's like I have this story. I'm just waiting to for the next whenever I get a chance to kind of like do it as a probably as a comic book or graphic novel or something. Oh, I'm excited for that. And it's yeah. like the, the dystopia book is kind of like the dungeon master guide for dystopia. It's like for that world. It's like the rule right. book, sort of the Bible. Should even do just an RPG, a TTRPG with it. <laughs> there, there are. That's uh, yeah. And like I, I that may be people, in the works. <laughs> I could see people like what is it like Warhammer? Or like painting your totally like, man. Figures? Yeah, that's I awesome. Know, I know. Yeah. There's so, so many, so much, so many places to go with it. But I love that because you. I know you mentioned that it's almost it's in reverse, but it to me it feels like the purest tether of a story. And I, I was yeah. wondering when you're getting interviewed about, you know these magnanimous creatures that you've created like are are you just off the cuff like whatever comes to you that's your explanation of it or were there elements of like no this is from something you know it's like i i start with just an image with no, no verbally no right. not like i'm gonna paint a guy with a gun and a gas mask it's so how does that look it's more like I just, I'm either doodling to get ideas out, just mindlessly doodling and, until I see something that I think is interesting. And then I kind of develop that, or it's like, I get kind of an idea in my head of, oh, this would look cool. And then, and that's it. So, so 
but but as the thing develops i just kind of intuit that oh this is what's happening in the painting and a lot of times i don't even know until the painting's done right I, told it's crazy to me that that you know i i feel like as artists we have we're so lucky to have access to some part of our psyche to express it and mm -hmm. then and it kind of tells us something about ourselves at, you know you, you kind of use it as a as a kind of uh, yeah, yeah kind of as a mirror in some way like journalism of the self yeah 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 it's yeah. really interesting so it's all very it's never coming up with a story for the idea it's always the story's already there and i either am not sure what it is or usually what it is is i'm sure certain aspects i'm sure of i just intuitively know and then if if i if i if i don't know i'm it's like oh it's kind of mysterious to me too i don't really know what that means well it's it's beautiful because you are you're voyaging into these lands purely there's not like a uh, pretense about any of it you're you know everybody's along for the ride with you like, right, yeah. like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Where, let's <laughs> yeah. And like that, that's exciting to me. That's, that's the kind of work that I love because it is, it is discovering another world because you wouldn't, I mean, it, you know, maybe an expedition of a world that hasn't been, you know, uh, field guided yet. Right. But you are right. the person that's backpacking through this like mauve zone or whatever of, you know, <laughs> beasts and automatic, you know, what I love is like, they're almost automatic beasts, like automatic drawing. Cause that's right. kind of where they're coming from. And you're like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, this one looks like this and it's from this area. And, right. uh, you know, and of course, like that to me is the, the, almost the purest like form of narrative construction. You know? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's like with my artwork, you know, when I was younger, I tried to, I was in bands and I always mm -hmm. tried to be like, emulate bands I liked, you know, like Dead Kennedys or, you know, I went through a phase where I liked like really into Cat Stevens, nice. you know, like folk yeah. stuff and, yeah. you know, I've, uh, my music, musical tastes are varied, but I was always kind of like held especially like dead Kennedys, I held them up as like, a, you know, the Paragon. Mm -hmm. And so I, I try, I remember trying to, my lyrics were influenced by that. So it was like super political and very dead Kennedys in many ways. And, and it just, it's like, it always, I was good at songwriting, but I felt like conceptually it always kind of fell flat because I wasn't yeah. doing my own, it wasn't my own thing. It was like, I'm not good at like Jello Biafra. I'm not good at doing satire of politics and stuff. I'm just, it's, it's not my, where my talent lies. Right. And, and I'm, you know, I'm not like great verbally or I'm just, I'm of a visual person. Mm. And so I think my talent is I have this ability to visually express this thing <laughs> whatever it is i have i'm i'm able to express this thing that's expressing itself through me and i'm able yeah. to let it let it out and not get in the way of it and so every every painting has been generally like if i stand step aside i'm not smart enough to come up with the idea that i may potentially come up with like you know i've i've had paintings that i consider like wow that's super clever it's a great idea very successful but I stumbled upon it, you know, and, 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 yeah. and but that's, but that's my angle. It's like, I, I know I'm not smart enough to come up with this intellectually come up with this stuff. It's before, but, but there, yeah. yeah. But there is a part of me inside that is, that's like a genius, but sure. it's, I feel like it's not me. It's like this other thing. And it's like, I'm just like, okay, Chet, you guys st <laughs> step yeah. back. Cause you're a dummy. Let the thing do its thing. <laughs> and and so like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so the art, uh, the art of that is learning how to let go and not imposing your will onto it, but serving the thing. Yeah. Like it's your job. That's why you, if you're going to be an artist, you have to be a badass artist. You have to have your, you know, your chops, you have to have your skills down because mm. you have this gift of, of this higher thing coming through you. And you have to serve it. You have to like put it above you and be like, okay, art thing. Mm -hmm. 
I am going to express you to the best of my ability. And if I fail, that means I failed you. So I have to practice. I have to make sure I'm really good at what I'm doing. It has to be amazing because, you know, it's like a religious thing or a spiritual thing, you know, right. Like, you need to get it to be as sound as, as possible to, yeah, the, to the best in there. Yeah. yeah. And to the best of your ability, that's your yeah. job as that's, I think that's kind of like when they talk about service, it's like, mm. that's the service. I think, I mean, every people, you know, some people like want to go and feed the homeless. My wife mm -hmm. takes stuff to the homeless all the time. It's like, I, and I appreciate that as far, but I feel like, you know, uh, you got to be of service to the thing in you that that you're meant to be doing. Yes. You know, yeah. that's and and uh, uh, for me, that's the that's that's the thing. That's the thing I'm meant to do. So I have to I can't slack off and do it half ass. I have to really. Yeah. You know, honor it. So so that it's like, you know, it's this becomes a spirit. It's a spiritual practice in that way. It's, it's communion. Like, yeah. 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 Totally. It's it's everything that that you get from magic or religion. Yep. It's the same thing. It's just, uh, you know, this is the, the easel is, is the, uh, the altar, you know, yeah. and, and the, in the painting for me as a painter, painting the image is honoring God yeah. or whatever, or the, the ink thing. is the yeah. offering. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that. And, and so, yeah. you, you know, it's just like being a good, okay. Imagine put it in the parallel of being a good Christian or whatever, a good altar mm -hmm. boy, or if you're Catholic, doing everything correctly and not screwing up to honor God, to do the rituals perfectly. That's like what I feel like I'm doing with the artwork for, Yeah, in my weird little art system. I love it because like you're, and that's the thing, your daemon or whatever is versed in like these constructual layers of that skill is so needed to. to right. Yeah. Yeah. You know and it's I mean? not. And, yeah. And it's like, that's, the, that's why, I like all kinds of art. Yeah. Some art doesn't require that. And right. it's because yeah. if that's their right. thing, you know, some people are amazing at like collage or abstract art. Mm -hmm. And that's their thing. That's their, their daemon. That's their thing. That's trying to get out. And it's like, yeah. and, and that's a whole different skill set to be good at abstract art or be good at collage or whatever. So it's like, you have to figure out what the thing is and serve it which is basically like discovering your true will and magic. I think Yeah, you know, absolutely. as an artist, you have to find out what is the thing I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. Now I know what I'm supposed to be doing. How do I serve that to the best of my ability? And then that's well, your you hit the, job. You hit the nail on the head with that, you know, just this communion, this dance with it and needing to serve it by, you know, representing it in this somatic reality as close to as possible as you're getting right. the, the message or whatever. I mean, the re, the reason why I know how to do anything is because I had a inspiration or a, a communion with something that said, Hey, you know, I'm going to need uh, a, you know, a whatever, like I'm going to need a, a, an instrument or, or a certain instrument that I haven't played before. You know what I mean? Or, mm -hmm. a, um, uh, a, you know, whatever, like whatever yeah. tool. And it was like, okay, well now I got to learn this thing, right. <laughs> the best <laughs> oh, you know, to at least get this one out and hopefully it doesn't right. ask for, you know, too much harder. But that's, yeah, my whole life has been like that. Like, oh, I have a great, uh, you know, cello line in my head. It's like, how the hell am I going to yeah. do that? <laughs> <laughs> totally, man. Yeah. 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 It's and, like whatever creative, it's like you, you let that, your creative impulse be your guide. That's how you yeah. let the, uh, the spirit in, I guess, you know? Absolutely. And I think, um, yeah, and you're right. Like uh, everybody's daemon talks differently. I think mine's pretty ramshackle, mm -hmm. um, you know. Um, but uh, but I do love that yours is so beautifully versed in kind of that, you know, very very four D two dimensional aspect of visual art. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, like, of course, like the fundamentals and all of this stuff. You, of course, you were inspired to get really good at it because you're like, I I if I can't draw what's in my brain, then what am I doing here? You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah it's just, it's exactly. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, it's, it's strange. It's strange. It's like, uh, you know, you have a vision for your artwork. Yeah. 
you know, your, your, whether it's your music or whatever, you have a vision of how you want it to be, how good you want it to be. And um, if you don't hit that mark, you're like, it's like your your offering to God wasn't good enough, you know. God, right. God, God is which is the song or the yep. painting. That's God, and uh, the 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 representation that you want to share with other people. You're gonna bringing this spirit out to share with other people to inspire them. Mm -hmm. And if you do a shitty job, then you're not doing yeah. you're not doing enough for the the amazing thing that you're you choked you're... on the communion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when it's like, you know, we're so lucky to have that. It's a, it's a, yeah. it's a, it's an, um, it's an, it's an it's honor. Intrinsic too, yeah. Yeah. But too. yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, uh, I don't think honor was the word I'm thinking of. It's oh, privilege. It's a privilege yes. yeah. to, to have that because a lot of people don't have that, you know, and, or maybe it's, it would be, a lot more work to get that for some mm -hmm. people, you know? So it's a privilege and you can't, you have to honor the, you have to honor that, that, you know, show that appreciation by, by doing the best you can. Yeah. You know? I love that too. And especially, you know, in the advent of AI, you know, I think like the silver lining of all this AI bullshit is that all of the people I don't care about, uh, in like the corporate universe, you know, utilizing it, it doesn't matter. But what it is doing is reigniting, like instead of the high tech, it's reigniting the high touch. And mm -hmm. people are really kind of getting back into, hey, you know, we're all like crooked humans, but that's kind of beautiful. What are we yeah. doing? You know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, let's uh, let's make books again. That's like, what makes it great. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, yeah physically. Yeah. Getting back to. It's, and it's been, media. yeah, it's been kind of heading in that direction. And I think AI just kind of kicked it up a notch, you know, mm -hmm. by, by, and it's, you know, it's so funny because I see people using um, AI now for th YouTube thumbnails and stuff. Uh, I know. And I it's know. like, they, they don't have any kind of pull to me. It's remember when they first came out, it was like, this is pretty amazing. Some of these are pretty right. amazing. These are pretty impressive. And yeah. now it's just like they it's just been a, a glut of the same old shit. It all looks the same. And it and yeah. it it's like, oh, it doesn't make me want to click on it. You anymore. know, that's so funny because that's exactly um, I was talking about this with somebody else. But it's like it's not I don't even have to be intellectual about it. I literally anytime I see an AI image, I automatically know it's AI and my interest wanes. Totally. <laughs> it's like, like it I'm does just the, like, it does okay. the, yeah, does Moving the opposite on. now. Does, yeah, does the opposite of what it's supposed to do, which is kind of hilarious and perfect. Yeah, and like, <laughs> uh, you know, there are. I know, like, I've been pretty vocal about uh, my disinterest in AI art and its use, and you know, people using it. But there are great folks, uh, like Ali Words, you know, technomancy, kind of communing with AI. You yeah. know, so there, there, there are people doing cool stuff out there with yeah, it it's definitely intentional and fun and definitely. and revealing but like just the advent of of the whole after my aggression subsided about mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone being obsessed with it you know yeah like it it was met with this almost like this exciting retaliation where right. i'm like here we are now people are are remembering the beauty of human error right and i'm full of human error so like yeah. we're gonna have a good time you know <laughs> yeah yeah it's that it, yeah it's the imperfection and the humanity yeah. that makes it that makes it good there's a guy speaking of people using it right there's this guy dougie Ple pledgers doing kind of amazing stuff on instagram but this guy on twitter frank Man manzano hmm. it, it, he it's like this to me this is the way ai should be used because it look it's like it looks real like real people it's not like imitating artists it's it's Good. imitating reality uh, yeah. and it's so fucked up like nightmare you know you've seen the nightmarish image imagery like i feel uh, like, like is it like it kind of has the veneer of like a 1970s film like kind or of like every, 
eight millimeter camera or something kind of but yeah. like everything's morphing into each other and the faces yeah, like people that uh, like are <laughs> it's so it's it's like a nightmare it really is the closest thing i've ever seen to a nightmare or a bad dream it has the okay. feeling like you're it's doing kind of what your brain does on a really scatterbrained nightmare but mm -hmm. you should check his stuff out because because to me it's like that is if you're gonna use art the uh, ai to make art that's kind of the pinnacle to me like make the most dis disturbing <laughs> fucked up shit work you don't try and duplicate reality perfectly right. you know that Absolutely. is lame the thing when you're it's it's new it, it feels like it's its own medium and it's disturbing and and totally, totally so weird it's so so disturbing and off-putting that i just love yeah. it that's so interesting but yeah that's kind of the same thing with uh you know, when like the sample culture was kind of hitting its apex and, you know, uh, digital audio workstations became affordable. And then mm -hmm. like, you know, a MIDI controller could mimic, you know, a cello or a trumpet or right. a Rhodes piano, like, but you can tell, you know, like right, you yeah, intrinsically yeah. Uh, can tell. I'm sure they're getting better with it now, but that's always been my ethos. Like if I'm using a Casio keyboard i'm using it for the casio exactly lo-fi casio keyboard totally. sounds, you know <laughs> exactly uh, exactly i exactly. would never try to replicate something that i could do live or capture live right right, or, right. you know maybe it's different if uh you can get an ava ai uh, like tube and throat singing or something yeah <laughs> <a> nightmare <laughs> by the way um but yeah I, how is that uh have you seen kind of a good i feel like I was worried. I know Eric Millar and I, who I brought up before, we do We the Hallowed. So it's got, you know, the website has been around for years and we've been putting out original art and content and albums and videos and find out that, you know, because we were using WordPress, that 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 data was sold, you know, yeah. to AI, generative AI engines. So Terrible. we immediately were like, fuck, you know, um, but... Yeah it's sub it's kind of subsided since then and i think a lot of it is because I, I i see more of an appreciation or i'm i'm more um invigorated by mm -hmm. like non-artificial intel generative intelligence or whatever you know what i mean oh I, yeah I think, <clears throat> yeah that's yeah. that that's kind of what i was when I, I when ai first started coming around and people were really freaking out artists illustrators i was trying to like be a look on the bright side kind of person about it and saying i kept saying you know now is the perfect time to like start that fine art career that you always wanted mm -hmm. to start because they can't fuck with your fine art they can't copy right. your oil your one original oil painting i don't even care if a robot is copying it it's not the same thing in, not, fi yeah. in fine art it's like specifically in fine art paintings and things like that it's like it's about collecting original pieces for collectors and relying on a very small core group of collectors that want an original. And that's one thing that they cannot fake. I don't care. Can't be done, you know, because they want a piece of art that has been painted by the purse, the artist, a certain artist. Yeah. And, From and the calluses on their fingers, right. to the bones, how they set and grew in their hand, to the yep. <laughs> neurology. Like I'm, I'm serious. Like all of yeah. that stuff the, do, the the dog hair in my paintings. It's yep. like it's yep. part of the characteristic, and it can't be faked. So I was kind of going. I got a lot of pushback because people were like, you know, I I, I get it. Looking back now, I was like, I probably shouldn't have been like that. <laughs> but I was trying to be. I was trying to offer like, you know everyone's always yeah. everyone in professional illustration or from my where i was from makeup effects was always talking about they wanted to be fine artists they want to do fine art and they never did it because the money's better it's it's, it's hard to make a living so yeah. i was i was just trying to make the point like you know if it is coming and it's gonna screw everything up here's one way they can't fuck with you if you're making your own original stuff it's a harder road but you won't have to worry about being put out of a job I think that's a beautiful sentiment and I wish, uh, you know, more people adhered to it. But at the same time, I feel like I'm at that place where after, you know, years of working with different artists and different mediums, or, like there's no pulling teeth. Like if, if, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's hard to, 
to ingrain motivation for someone to follow, you know, their passions these days. And like with the advent of uh, social media and this kind of false equivalency of success that's happening, it's almost like harder. I just, I just see like a, a general flakiness or lack of, you know, um, effort really, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And you would think like something as big as that. It's like, well, you can't be comfortable anymore. Um, you know, right. cause it, it might fuck with your livelihood. Uh, in that sense, I think that it's a pragmatic call to arms to be like, well, then yeah. screw it. I'm going to go the other way, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially if it's like, you know, this is something you've always been talking about. Maybe it's a good time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe it's a good time to at least start because, you know, it's it's a harder road being an independent fine artist but you really do create your own opportunities you you know you're not waiting around for someone to hire you you're like oh i need money this month i gotta figure something out i gotta make something and i have to get it out in front of people and and it's hard you know it's hard it's 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 a hard road but it is you're not worried you're not you know worried about not not getting hired or your job getting taken away by ai you know yeah, absolutely. And but I I just yeah, I love that as a uh, it's it's just a reality check. I mean, right. I can, you know, I do I dislike a lot of the use of AI. I'm or I'm just like generally disinterested and just not impressed. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah, same. Once um, the once the initial charm wears off, it's like, okay. Yeah. Now what? But yeah, now that like that it's like it's inevitable. Like no matter what anybody thinks, it's it's coming, so, you know. Yeah. How that affects you is how it's going to affect you. But thankfully, I think for folks in fields like ours or passions or interests like ours, it's just it's it's more of like sep- uh, getting a bigger separation between or like kind of culling a bit, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, of uh, of avenues because yeah, it's just right. it's going to buoy in person gallery shows and and you know live yeah. performance and. And all of that stuff. So yeah, that's a, that's a, it's like, but that's you know, and that's the thing that it it will never be able to do. It's like mm-hmm. it will never be able to perform live. It will never be able to. You'll, you know, the only way yeah. to really experience a band is seeing them live, mm-hmm. having that experience, and the only way to really see a painting is to see it in person. Absolutely, and that's yeah. it. And there's no you can't fake that in any way it's like it'll always be that way too i just yeah i can't stress enough how important um like the somatic relationship between an artist and what you're experiencing from that artist is you know like uh, mm. it's just so yeah it's just so intrinsically powerful um that you know your your diet during that period your thought process things are happening in your life right yeah you're you know the the physiology about like everything about you is kind of captured yeah right yeah totally all the things you're worried about all the stresses all the you know the satisfaction of creating the piece all the episodes of the brady bunch i watched while (laughs) (laughs) i was in the background while i was painting that's the funniest thing too it's like the stuff I put on is like the contrast crappy yeah. stuff that I grew up with in the seventies. So it's like, I went through a deep dive of what's happening. You remember that yeah. show what's happening with rerun and oh, yeah. Rod yeah. Rod. So it's like, I'm painting these totally disturbing paintings with like either, you know, what's happening in the background or the Partridge family or the Brady yeah. Bunch, all this like super cheesy stuff. It's I it love kind it. of, kind of, it's kind of perfect really. It's like the the food the beast was eating, you know. More episodes, <laughs> yeah, more, like, more Alice than any. Yeah, yeah. yeah the That's demon so the demon eats uh, cheesy seventies crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like yeah, the like post nuclear family, mm-hmm. you know. Totally, stuff, which is kind of true. I feel like that's the encampment that David Lynch, you know, beacons from is that right. kind of like deterioration of the fifties nuclear family. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. The dark underbelly. I, yeah, I love yeah. that. Um um I never thought of that, but the idea that the creature that you're painting is being fed by the 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 music you're putting on or yeah. the thing the thing you're watching in the background. I love that idea. That's yeah. Great. I 
And I, yeah, I'm just, uh, you know, it's, it's probably maddening or kind of superfluous for a lot of people, but I just, I really kind of obsess about those like little documentarian aspects because it really does paint a, like a picture, a, re- a really true, beautiful, like picture of the atmosphere you're existing in when you create, right. you know? Yeah, and I yeah. think as, as, to go back to set and setting, how important that is, you know, um, especially if someone enjoys or like is, is pulled by something you created, like it, yeah. it literally takes them there, you know, yeah, it's yeah. really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing to connect with someone who you don't know that sees mm-hmm. the artwork and they're like, Oh my God, this person is like me somehow, you know, like it, the connection between two people through a piece of artwork, whether it's a song or, you know uh yeah or, or a painting or whatever it's it's or just words you know right just right freaking words it's yeah. crazy yeah. it is crazy <laughs> oh I, I was gonna say something about um the ai and yeah. scra- scraping data i noticed that um i you know when it first started happening i was putting my artwork in the lookup thing to see if it was in the database and it's like yeah all these old pieces were but I still haven't been able to, I haven't seen anybody do a good fake AI version of one of my paintings. I don't know why. And, I don't know if it's because I'm like not mainstream enough or right. something, but there's not a lot of other people doing it. I think with the stuff that it, it, it's, it's the, taking the it's using the most popular artwork. I think. Sure. So that may be so. So anyway, it's, it's just a search engine that is mashing up the right. results of your, Right, Search right, query right. Or whatever, yeah. You know? so I, I may be enough of like a cult artist or something to where I'm not really, I'm not famous enough to be in like really have my stuff in there and well, represent it well. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say That's though, surprising actually. I was gonna say, well, but it's I have it's surprising that it couldn't replicate it. You know, <laughs> it maybe it can, and no one's done it yet. But I, I mm-hmm. haven't seen it. I've seen people try to do it, and it just doesn't. They think it looks like my stuff, and I didn't like it. Doesn't look like my stuff. I, I know what my stuff looks like. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, I mean, no, I saw I saw a a model train a Chet Zar AI model that was sold on the black market, and the samples were just like shit. They sucked. It's like I saw it and I was all pissed, and I saw the sample. I was like, okay, go ahead. I don't. It doesn't look anything like what I'm doing. It's so bad. Wait, explain that. So someone engineered an AI model yeah. of your. Of like you're what it just fed it all of your stuff or something? I, I guess so everything that's online there was a whole bu- it was on this website where there was a whole bunch of artists and I was one of them. Do you remember what the website was? No, but I could find Not, I can I, I don't could, know I don't want to promote them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could find out. I know the yeah, guy yeah. who told me, the guy who told me about it would would remember probably. That's but, scary as shit. I know, like, I, but like I said, I was pissed at first, and then I saw the sample. I was, I was like, "This is terrible." I'm not worried about it. But um, my point I was initially going to make was I noticed that everything up until I got on Patreon was in was in the database. You know? Yeah, but the the the. Uh, the paywall the stuff, the yeah the stuff behind the paywall on patreon none of it none of it was in there that's awesome that's so a it's good, like that's yeah. like the that's kind of a way to I, I made a video on my on the dark art society uh uh podcast youtube about like it's a way of protecting your artwork put it behind a paywall the problem yeah. with it is if you don't have a following, it's hard to get people to pay for something that they're used to getting. <laughs> for free. It's like, you know, I've got like 120,000, 124,000 followers on Instagram, and I've only been able to manage to get 300 something people on Patreon. It's like, no, it's hard. Yeah, It's like yeah, tiny, tiny percentage are willing to pay. And they like, you know, comes and goes. And yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how mine mine is. It'll like, oh, that's an exciting, and then you know, yeah. Sort of down and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's that's good to hear because I've used Patreon almost exclusively to like for like art barfing, mm-hmm. every, you know, like yeah, demos and uh, uh, writing drafts, and you know what I mean. Like yeah. I'm just throwing everything um, out there. Uh, so that's that's really uh, good to know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, and they they say yeah. that they they don't sell your data too. It says in the terms of hell so, yeah. So that's good. Okay, Patreon, yeah. you get another point. 
But yeah, speaking of which, your Patreon is uh, it's great. And I love seeing your updates, your works in progress. What's the deal with the statues, like the figures actually that you're making? Oh, the Divine Feminine figure. Yeah, I love those. Yeah, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's uh, it's I just started finally shipping them. They're about um, this is the so thing. good. Glows in the dark. No, it's the, like an uh, ulterior Santissima Muerte kind of. Yeah, it's yeah. again, it's like uh, it was based. It's based on a painting. It's based on a painting that I did for a Giger tribute show of all nice. things. And um, and again, it was like totally intuited. It's a, it's a female, which I don't always paint. And, hmm. you know, it's got um, but it's like I'm that was a conscious effort. It's like. I, I want to do more this, feminine energy. I've been kind of gotten, I've been more like, I had kind of a moment in my spiritual life where I'm like, why am I, why am I thinking of God as a male mm -hmm. figure? I've been doing this my whole life, even though I'm super like liberal, open-minded. I, in the, it's embedded that I see whatever it is, the thing as male. And it's I'm like, masculine, yeah. and it's masculine. It's like, I am more relate to, feminine energy really mm -hmm. if anything and you know i've got a strong wife you know all those things i really you know i i am i i appreciate women yeah and, sure. um and so anyway so like spiritually i'm like okay i'm gonna really try and make an effort to kind of direct my honoring the spirit and, and thinking of 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 it in more feminine terms and that was around the time i painted this so it was kind of like me sort of like kind of getting into this headspace of of of, of you know god worshiping the goddess over the god kind of and mm -hmm. so <clears throat> that's why the that's why i was like so i just kind of intuited this painting and it's got like the you know it's got uh holes the in the yeah, yeah it's got holes in the hands like crucifixion holes and it's got the onk and i don't know it's very just it's very kind of dark gothic virgin mary sort of and... but it, yeah it seems like universal and you have like you know a, a a few different you know religions represented right yeah like, yeah it's yeah it's sort of my own personal mashup of i don't know of i love yeah i love that and it's just like yeah it reminded me because i i work with uh, Santa Muerte a lot. Oh, cool! Um, just because yeah. of like where I, I come from. I love um, that. And, I, I I love it. I, I when I yeah. when I first discovered, it, I was like, this is like this is probably what I should be doing. It's so yeah. like in line with my artistic self. You know what I it's mean? It's yeah. It's a beautiful like rogue kind of you know ramshackle folk magic. Yeah, but, yeah. You it's, know, it's awesome. it's in the shadow, right? Of, right. Uh, and I'm I'm adult. also uh mexican too it's like I've got, oh beautiful yeah, yeah i'm like a quarter mexican so mm -hmm. i i feel the pull to that you know yeah probably far more than i would but i was a uh, you know i was a waiter lito growing up in uh, the southwest little white boy so oh really yeah <laughs> but awesome. like it was uh you know it was uh it was around so much and i only mean that to say uh the way i work with her is quite similar the way like i envision her sure she might be in the shadow of Catholicism, right, as a rogue saint or heretical mm -hmm. saint, which just kind of makes her cooler, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> That's a bonus. But like, uh, I feel like she, yeah, she to me is like that that great um, visage of like the fe the divine feminine, you know, the yeah, yeah, the absolutely, great mother, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So that's kind of, that was my version of it. I love you that, know, it's same, and like it's the same thing, yeah. You know? And they are, they're like they're beautiful little idols or like a uh, little like figurines like i would use or anybody would use you know on altars right and, yeah and yeah and it, yeah i feel like it's you know it's kind of my offering to her too when i decided to make that change yeah. in my spiritual life i'm like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put this out I, i'm gonna you know incorporate it into my art and get it out to people you know yeah it's kind of like penance, you know. Sorry, yeah. I've been <laughs> exactly. I've been neglecting you. I'm gonna put. Yeah. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get you in people's hands. Uh, I'll tell you the thing I I like the most is 
She comes in an upside down coffin. Holy shit. Yeah. That, is so <laughs> I thought that was the coolest thing ever. I was like, again, this is like, this is the thing, the Damon or whatever. Right. So I'm coming up with this. I, I had the idea to do the figure because I like the painting. And again, I tell you the, the, the background of kind of getting into that femi divine feminine uh, spirituality. And I'm thinking, okay, how can I present this? So I'm like, a uh, coffin would be cool. It just feels right. And so I found a place to get co coffins on cheap, relatively cheap coffins on eBay or Amazon. And mm -hmm. I got the coffin, spray painted it black. And I was like, you know, oh, it doesn't really fit the right way around. Oh, shit. If I turn it upside down, it's perfect. And it's way cooler. It's way, like, even that, it's, uh, it's almost intrinsically kind of, like anti how you understand what the right. coffin. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but the way her, you know, because of the way her hands I are, love it. it's like yeah. it's more yeah. shaped like an upside. So so you know, it looks like oh, I'm some genius that came up with this idea <laughs> to do that. And it's like, no, it was that's the way the genius works. It wasn't right. Me. It was it was inspiration, like you know, just being open to working with what you got and being creative yeah. with it you know well, and it was like I, I never would have intellectually thought oh an upside down coffin would be badass i'm not mm -hmm. like i said i'm not that smart <laughs> you yeah. know but i but i'm but i am capable of like recognizing something cool when i'm open enough to to recognizing when when something's i don't know when you see something it's like oh that could be cool you know i'm, I'm yeah. I recognize the possibilities but i'm not good at like just coming up with that idea on my well, own you, yeah you act and i like that's i really dig that about you and i think a, just a kind of a general idea of like certain artists and practitioners that i revere like they're just guns blazing like i just you know if there's something intrinsic in them i just got to do this and mm -hmm. then afterwards they're like oh i see the tethers and i can you know i can combine or like i can um define these things but at first it's like there's just something barking right deeply, and it's just it's got to get out i don't want to sit here and talk about what i'm going to do i don't want to sit <laughs> yeah, here right <laughs> i just want to do it yeah yeah <laughs> just want to do it yeah yep. and that's uh but also the multimedia thing too, which I really did, you know, uh, not only the background in SFX, but like making the figures, mm. like that's always exciting to me too. It's not limited to a medium when the Damon, you know, barks right. or whatever. It's like, yeah, you and know, the, and the more you know how to do as an mm. artist, the more the more multidisciplinary you are, the more options, you know, that that's that art spirit will come at you with like you know Absolutely. what i mean it's, yeah it's, it's it's like it'll give you things that <clears throat> maybe you don't know how to do but it knows that you could know how to do it like you're saying playing the cello it's like it knows it Which knows that I you can figure it out <laughs> banjo maybe was one yeah. you know we're like i a few notes on a trumpet <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right <laughs> or just you, yeah it's like those practical that's the thing that's your that's your initiatory way in it's like oh um i dispelled this elusive idea of you know the this instrument because something motivated me to you know make it do this one thing i needed for something mm -hmm. and now that's opened the doors for right. you know yeah continuing to do that yeah yeah I love it, man. And so, yeah, outside the um, the October show, like, what's uh, what's going big in Chet's world? Um, that is, I can't see anything beyond that. That okay. is, that's it. That's all yeah, I'm working you're, towards. You're focused. Yeah, <clears throat> I have to keep, you know, bringing money in somehow. So it's like, you know, I'm doing little sales and stuff as I need money to pay the bills while I work on this stuff. And um, you know, I've got all kinds of big plans that may or may not happen once I get through this year. But, you know, sure. like, like the, you know, I really, I feel like I put this book out, which is this magnum opus and the people in the, most of the people in the Kickstarter have gotten it. I've sold it on the website, but it's still like, you know, my masterpiece. When you see this book, you're going to trip out, man. I'm telling you, That's, it's like all out tome. Yeah. It's really like a lot of, it was very expensive and a lot of effort was put into it. 
And I'm just like, I'm just an independent guy though. You yeah, know, it's yeah. like, I don't have it on Amazon. I don't, you know, I have, I had it in, uh, I don't know. You can buy it at Copro gallery, but these are like, okay. you know, it's to me, the book is like, it should be remember bookstores when you'd go and you could get, yeah. you know, you get the monster manual in, in mm -hmm. bookstores. It was there and you could look at it and it's like, there are no bookstores anymore. So, or not a lot of them, but well, I just yeah, feel like if there are, you don't have the the time to hunt them down. Yeah, exactly. Each one and, yeah. and and that's just kind of the story of the independent artist. Mm -hmm. You do your best with what you can, and that you know that shouldn't stop you from making the coolest stuff you can. And you got to kind of trust the universe or whatever that it's going to get in the hands of the people that it should get get in their hands. But that doesn't stop me from dreaming big and thinking about like a kick uh, yeah. a comic book doing like a Kickstarter for a graphic novel. That would be amazing. You know, I mean, I'd, I'd be so in. Yeah. That, that would... <laughs> a Chet Zirka. I'm surprised. Like uh, there hasn't been a, a dip into that medium yet as it was, even if it was like a cover, you know? Yeah. I've just never you, been. You would, yeah. You would knock it out of the park. Like I, well, yeah. thank you. But I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm I, <laughs> love comics i grew, especially horror comics i grew up with horror mm -hmm. comics mostly <coughs> rather than the superhero stuff sure but um yeah just it's like i never got hooked in with that scene it's like a totally different scene you know yeah um, so i never had the it's opportunity What's yeah that? that's its own i said it's true that's it's its own kind of uh yeah self kind of generating you know yeah industry, and, you gotta, and also jobber artists you know yeah 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 so you gotta like you know put some if i put some effort in i could probably get in there and do some stuff but you know i've sort of <clears throat> got my thing yeah. for better or for worse i've got a thing which is art shows and creating original pieces of art and selling it online and you know hopefully the uh i, I just hopefully i can turn the dystopia thing into um something more like you you know you mentioned games or, or whatever yeah. card games or and then there's like a tarot deck i want to do it's like i'll die to do a tarot deck it would be Heck so yeah. amazing there's just like it's never there's never a shortage of ideas there's just a shortage of time and money it's always but i love too that you of course and you'll probably tend to those ideas obviously but i love how that you uh, have discipline enough too to know like hey this october show is a pretty mag magnanimous ordeal i don't i you know i don't want to distract myself outside of kind of that focus which i i struggle with even with yeah <clears throat> deadlines is just uh wanting to do a bunch of other stuff on top of it so yeah it but know. but it's like it's it's <clears throat> it's how but the thing is it's like that's how you do i'm it. relying on that to make money yeah exactly <laughs> People, I know pe collectors, a few collectors are coming from out of town, flying in for it. It's exciting. Uh, the gallery relies on me. So let's talk about it. Like, so it's like, I, I'm, Joe itself, uh, I, mean, I don't think we I, talked about where it is. Oh, <clears throat> I can't. So basically what I'm saying is I can't, I can't really let myself get distracted because I got all this, I got pressure from other from I, other people are depending on me kept doing this show sure you know, otherwise it would be easier to be like oh i'm gonna work on the comic tonight yeah. Uh, uh but yeah it's at copro gallery which is in santa monica it's the really my only gallery i used to show at last rights gallery in uh, mm -hmm. new york but they closed down during the pandemic and uh it was paul booth's gallery <clears throat> and uh yeah copro gallery in santa monica um they're great they're like the number one kind of dark art weird mm -hmm. surrealist dark surrealist gallery in town no i'm excited and uh I opens hope october to, 12th october 12th yeah, yeah. i hope things yeah. align for that i'll definitely put the uh like the info for that in the show notes so oh cool check it out there are a bunch of um la folks who i'm sure would die to go see your art up close yeah, um, it's, it's you got to see it. that's everyone you know everyone who goes to an art show that it says says the same thing you have to see it in person there's something about mm -hmm. like energetically or something yes. some kind of energy coming off the painting you could you could go you could be scientifically minded and say like well that you're getting different 
your eyes are picking up different hues. You can see the texture of the paint, but I really feel like it's more of an energy thing, but maybe that's the same thing. Maybe those things are part of the energy, I mean, of, you, you know? Yeah. You're witnessing a book like an artifact. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, that was manipulated and touched and, and dealt with and like, yeah, I can't stress enough how important that uh, part of it is. And to, you know, the online stuff is great for, you know, getting people to that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the, you know, it's the it's like kind of like the old DIY punk yeah. ethos of you make the record or the CD or the cassette to promote the show for your mm -hmm. tour. And you make the money from your, what you know, they weren't making a ton of money, but they were right. making their money through touring. And the um, album was just promotion for the tour. Yep. You know, it was the in between, yeah, when they're not there. It's like the thing to get people to go see you live, which is your main thing, which you know, for you know, the, these punk bands and stuff. Absolutely. And I think, yeah, to go back to that, where I, I think, um, I don't know if like culture as a whole, but I know the people that I care about, uh, and uh, I'm interested in artistically, such as yourself and, and others, like are going that route or like you know it's gonna up the diy punks again and it's gonna be a lot of fun with in-person somatic you know rhythm yeah and yeah small I, publishing and you know <laughs> if anything man this uh whole ai thing is that's the thing it's like i feel like it's going to if ai art becomes this big thing and it is it's putting illustrators out of business it's fucked up you, i mm -hmm. see it all the time now on like when i look up the news or whatever they're using them in ads and i saw one for like a hotel chain the other day and it's like it was so disturbing like this lady with the kids like ah, on a water slide <laughs> and like had a, a, an arm coming out of nowhere like they're not even checking this stuff they're just kidding. anyway um uh what was my point i had a good point ai art okay right yeah. right so <clears throat> um i think what is going to happen inadvertently is what you're saying whereas it's, it's going to make unique physical art physical art experiences like seeing bands play it's going to make all that stuff even more valuable and more important like the more digital and <clears throat> And it's like, you know, I like digital. I think digital is cool. I use it as a tool for. Yeah, tools, right? Yeah. But the more <clears throat> we're infiltrated with AI and fakeness, you know, and all this mm -hmm. phony shit, it's, it's like the real stuff's going to become more important and valuable, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's that <clears throat> delineation, too, about like, yeah, we we as artists, you know, use uh, digital tools because these were invented to be egalitarian, like mm -hmm. that low income people could create works of art. Right. Yeah. We're not using them to replace. Yeah, art exactly. Art. <laughs> like, yeah, but, but they are the, you know, co corporations and companies are doing that. They're they're taking yeah. it away from us again. You know, right. and, and, but uh, that, yeah, that's more of know. a I don't know. It's more of a capitalism problem right yeah and if they i do was, that every time when yeah. they have the opportunity they do it every fucking time it's just like and, that's yeah. how they are and i am bummed for the <clears throat> friends like in the industry that maybe you know lost out on creating that commercial you know yeah but at the same time like i wouldn't give a shit about that commercial let alone if it was filmed in you know 4k right, right, and, uh, yeah, yeah, right, I mean? right. it's a corporate true. commercial so true, i guess true. let them eat cake you know <laughs> <laughs> true true good point but yeah man i'm i'm so excited we got to do this this was uh yeah this is awesome was yeah such a good trip. yeah nice conversation appreciate it and yeah, I'm really excited for the October. I'm I'm going to try to corral the weather so that I can uh, dip down there because I I was just in LA uh, a couple months ago. Oh, cool! Plans to go back. Um, That'd be great. I don't know if you've ever been to the you know the Philosophical Research Society. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did a, I did a. Uh, you did, I did a, show a, there, right? a talk there. Yeah. 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 With I that, love that was place. that with Mitch? Or, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he interviewed me and I did a slideshow presentation. I love it. 
Yeah, that would have been amazing to see because that's what I'm even with like the advent of podcasting and and this right. thing like live talks are great. You know? Yeah, you can't beat it. You get to meet the person and go yeah. talk to them after. Yeah, it's the best. That's amazing. But yeah, so anyways, I'm excited to do that. Um, and please let me know if there's other things that you know come up that you want to want me to help promote. Like, oh I, yeah. You know, I- I'll shout out the podcast too, uh, yeah. Dark the Dark Art Society podcast. It's now on YouTube as well. It's an audio podcast, but now it's video for the last two years. I guess it's been it's already been like six six years. We've been doing it crazy. Mm-hmm. People still don't know that I have this podcast. People that are fans of my work, it's crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm in uh, the same boat. <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah, it's it's like uh, uh, it's crazy. But uh, I was like, so, is it a tagging issue? Like what? You know, I would just I think Richard Metzger talk about how he had to go deep onto TikTok to reach out to uh, modern or like younger magical practitioners. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I, am, am I not loud enough? What is happening? You know? I don't know. I think it's I think maybe what we're doing is so niche yeah. that we're not going to get picked up by the algorithm in the way that people doing stupid shit like mm-hmm. dumb mr beast stuff it's yeah, yeah. like you know we get it's kind of our lot in life not to say we shouldn't try and try and game the system best we can but you know the reality is like you know we think these are great podcasts but you know <laughs> it's like our tastes are a little different than kind of the average person oh, so for sure i was telling mary my uh, partner the other night i was like you know as somebody that uh, really values their authenticity, individuality, and like wants to wear the outsiderdom on their sleeve, I can't get mad if people don't know this way. You know <laughs> yeah, <what I> mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's part of our brand in a way. What do you expect? <laughs> but but I I have to say though, it's like you know, with the Dark Art Society podcast, the mission statement <clears throat> is to legitimize dark art. So I have yeah. I interview artists that kind of do weird monstery dark art and i try and and the, with the idea of like i guess the idea was sort of like um letting the public know it's okay to like this art it's as valid as people who paint flowers or bowls of fruit it's a legitimate subject it's just not taken seriously and this is why it should be serious and i interview all these artists and you realize that like we're cool nice people kind of deep thinking people and <clears throat> just worthy of consideration and um it also you know comes comes uh i i hit topics that i'm interested like magic and stuff side stuff like that um but mostly it's focused on art and so yeah so it 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 is the the goal kind of is to try and like give it a wider audience dark art yeah because I just it feel- should. It's a beautiful podcast. Um, oh, thanks. Thanks. Um, I've met a lot of artists that uh, I'm now into because of the podcast. Oh, um, great. That's great like, to hear. Uh, Albert Fish. Was one. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah it's great. But he, uh, but you're, you're, you guys always dip into what I love about it is there is an element, I think, with us having to exist in this world, you know, that I don't want to say blue collar, but there is like a, you know oh yeah uh, utility kind of driven like we're you know being being honest about like the the work ethic and all of that and your podcast is brilliant about discussing all of that you know thanks. yeah yeah thanks that's it's it comes up it's a natural podcast mm-hmm. and that's like this is the stuff that artists talk about you know when they're hanging out for lunch or whatever so it kind of you know the the realities of 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 uh <clears throat> the work and and it is and it is blue collar that's the thing yeah. it's like people you know f- because we're more independent and we don't go to you know banker jobs or whatever it's still you know it's like you know it's like being a plumber or a mechanic or something in a way it's like the difference there's only the only difference between that because because most of the work you know how it is writing music recording music it's like it's a lot of hard work, like mm-hmm. fixing a pipe, <laughs> yeah. you know, or fixing a, lot a car. Of utility. Yeah. yeah. Figure. Yeah. Figuring out how to make this the way you want it. And the only difference is that is that you're <clears throat> rather than repairing something for someone else, you're 
your um sir you have an idea that you want to express and you're serving this idea so it's like you're not serving a customer with a clogged toilet you're serving this spirit that's telling you make this thing yeah. <laughs> so unclog my toilet yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unclog my spiritual toilet yeah exactly <laughs> so it's but, like yeah but but mo but that's you know that's the the most most of it is blue collar the mm -hmm. grind you know working the 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 wayne wayne white have you ever seen that uh documentary uh, beauty is embarrassing wayne white no you got to see it. It's great. He's a great artist, uh, Wayne White. But he ref he's doing like he's painting and they're f filming him at one point. He's like funny. He's funny. His artwork's funny. And he's like, this is the ditch digging part. You know, coming up with the idea is <laughs> yep. the fun part. And then the ditch digging part is like 90% of it where you're just like the slog to get to the final piece, you know? Yep. And that's most of it. And that's a blue collar work, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it's transference. Like um, we're working on a new like music project that's very straightforward. They're like their songs is with a, a drummer in Chicago. And like it was we just hit it off. It was so exciting. We have six songs worked on. And now I'm like, fuck, here comes the mastering. Like, I'm like, <laughs> rush the mastering job. You know what I mean? It's going to be a lot yeah. of computer work. And, <laughs> and that's not even counting the uh, fuck. I got to post it on social media. Yeah, the promotion yeah. <laughs> and figuring out the packaging and all that stuff and printing yeah, exactly. things out. It's like it's it's a grind, man. So yeah. it is It's very it, it is. It's more it's got more in common with the blue collar world than the white collar world for sure. Well, yeah, I know it firsthand too, because I work in the event industry as like a AV specialist. So oh, wow. all, all of my, uh, you know, all of my companions and coworkers. Yeah. We're all like technically proficient and wow. you know, the technical aspect of, you know, the, uh, the audio visual world. Right? right. But they're all budding musicians and, and filmographers and, you know, cine like, uh, cinephiles and they're they're all people that like okay we we have a union you know we uh right we go to work we get these jobs we we work them we build them um and then we go home and we work on our shit and yeah. it's like it's very much like the technical just the technical aspect for money on one side right. and then it feeds into the other thing you know yeah yeah because it's like an, it's like an art related job yeah. So, so you get get a lot of like artists who would rather just be artists, but you know they yep. figure out a way to use their talent to uh, earn a living, which is totally legit. Mm -hmm. You know. <clears throat> yeah, and that's like yeah, that's that's how it goes. But I've I've always considered, you know, the freelance lifestyle like that in and of itself is yeah, you're a you know yeah. non agent of of uh, your own chaos, but yep. you also you know taking it at will so it's exciting and you you know you do great work and i hope you know dark arts society at least dark art society <laughs> um gets gets more listenership because there's a lot of like really valuable information for artists and and people going you know damn the man kind of a, yeah. like, how, do, how do i do this <laughs> you know? yeah i try and talk about stuff i wish that i would have you know, I wish there was a podcast like that when I was first starting out, basically. Yeah. You know, that's so. exactly right. Yeah. Well, thanks, yeah. man. I'll have to have you on sometime for an interview. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd be honored. Absolutely. Um, be awesome. We'll do it. But uh, yeah, thank you for, you know, coming back and humoring me. Of course, the God, the uh, internet gods are good when I'm just recording. Right? <laughs> that's, that's fine. That's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, it was it, it ended up working out because I think this is a great conversation. So, yeah, absolutely valuable and uh, actually uh, motivational because I have to do some like mixing and cleanup. Now I'm like, <laughs> got to punch in the work, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Same here. As soon as I get off, I'm going to yep. try and finish this painting. Just or get yep, it started. Turn to the, yeah. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, thanks again. And yeah, let's, let's, let's keep talking and uh, let me know if there's any, anything I can do to help get the word out about the uh, show in October. Um, yeah, appreciate yeah it. anything. Just let cool. me know. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Of course. And thank everybody for catching this. And yes. uh, the audio version will be both of them, I think together. Oh, so, cool. but I'll, I'll be premiering this pretty soon. Cause it, I don't, Unless there's something you feel like I should edit out, but I don't. Yeah, mm -mm. Uh, yeah. No, okay. it's all good. 
Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you, man. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for for catching it and thanks, haunt everybody. on. Thank you. Haunt on. <laughs>